I was contacted by one of my viewers, uh, Dave, Mystic Dave, and uh, he said that he wanted me to do a ballistic gel test on some Hornady, um, 100 grain, 30 caliber, and a 300 blackout. I don't know if you can see that or not. These are little teeny tiny uh, semi-jacketed or half-jacketed or short jacket. I think they're called short jacket. Um, and he sent me 20 of them. Uh, so I loaded some of them up in, uh, in the 300 blackout. You can kind of see what they look like in the uh, in the magazine there. They're very short. Um, got one here. This one is actually loaded up with uh, 16 grains of powder. We're going to try and slow it down a little bit for the ballistic gel test. Um, they're supposed to be traveling between 22 and 2300 feet per second. Um, he wanted to see what they were going to do out at 50 yards. Uh, 50 yards is 1,945 feet per second at 2,200 feet per second at the uh, at the muzzle. So I loaded up five um, 100 grain short jacket with uh, 19 grains of Hodgson 296, and uh, we're going to shoot that out of a 16-inch barrel. We're going to chronograph those. I've got a target set up at about 20 yards. We're actually going to see what that looks like. Um, he says they don't group real well. Uh, but we're gonna see. We're gonna we're gonna play with that. But then we're gonna shoot that other one out of the uh, out of the short barrel, um, out of the pistol, and uh, see what kind of. Make sure we're clear there. See what kind of uh, uh, speeds we can get out of that. We, again, we're gonna try and slow it down for the ballistic gel test to see what it will do at distance. Uh, it really drops velocity very quick. There's there's not much mass there. It's a hundred grains. Okay. Um, Something else that I did want to hit on is that uh, these rounds are actually very short, as you saw in there. They don't quite fill up the magazine all the way, but they fit very nicely behind the uh, the little shoulder um, uh, pieces for the uh, 223 or 556. Um, so they they hold in there pretty nice, but the problem is that they will load in your 556 chamber. They will chamber. Um, the the bullets don't hit. So uh, you gotta be very careful if you can try loading something up like this that you do not stick this in your 556. You will destroy your weapon. Okay, so um, we're gonna give uh, the ballistic gel test a, 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 a ooh. hopefully tonight we're gonna do the ballistic gel test. We're going to go ahead and, and uh, proceed with the uh, chronograph. Um, this is 300 blackout, 100 grain, semi-jacketed or short jacket uh, made by Hornady. It's uh, 19 grains of 296. I've got them trimmed down to 1.360. And the overall length on these is uh, 1.740. So um, it's just behind... I've got them pushed all the way in just behind that short copper jacket right there. And uh, that way I can get a, a little bit of a crimp on the end of the round. So let's, uh, we're going to get set up and, um, all right, YouTube, I think we're ready for the, uh, uh, for the chronograph. Um, one more thing that I did want to did want to mention is that uh, these are kind of short and fat. They are kind of pointed. Um, I did run them manually to make sure that they feed, and they seem to feed pretty good. But um, they do get scarred up pretty bad from the uh, from the M4 feed ramps. Uh, the feed ramps are kind of narrow for a, a, a you know for a pointed pointed bullet. So uh, that may have something to do with the with the accuracy according to mystic dave anyway he said that they're they're not extremely accurate but uh we're gonna go ahead and try them out and see what we can get Two 
2,432, 2,432, set up to, um, to do the uh, uh, pistol and uh, see how slow we can get this, um, see if it cycles and all that other good stuff, but uh, I did want to let you know, Dave, I'm, uh, mine are a little hotter than yours, but uh, yeah, the primers look great, um, still nice round corners on them, no protrusions, so I don't know if that's focusing or not. I don't have my reading glasses on, so I can't, I really can't see that well, but I can definitely see that these have nice round corners on them and stuff. So this is a, probably a pretty fun planking round. Um, they're about, the bullets are about 13 cents a piece. Um, unless you want to cast your own and put jackets on the back of them. I don't know if it's than that, but this, this seems like this pretty fun uh, planking ammo for this. But anyway, we're gonna go ahead and, and load this up. I've got one round with uh, 16 grains of powder. I've got a 10, 10 and a half inch barrel, I think is what it is, a Novosky barrel in this. And uh, let's see what we get. Ooh, 1786 and uh, it cycled magazine locked it back so uh, we can get pretty slow with this and uh, still have some fun cycled perfectly um, pistol length barrel or uh, excuse me pistol length gas tube I had a pistol length gas tube in the uh, in the other rifle also so um I can actually speed these up a little bit. Like I said, I got 1786. Uh, it's a pretty good year, wasn't it? But um, anyway, see you for the ballistic gel test. Peace. All right, YouTube, we're back again. We're still looking for 1,900 feet per second, give or take. Um, so I loaded up two more rounds. Uh, the first round's got 17 grains of powder, and uh, the next one is 17.5 grains of 296. And uh, we're going to go ahead and chronograph those and... Uh, See if we can get on target. I'm trying to hit that little red dot down there. So uh, we got to get it zeroed in for the uh, for the ballistic gel test anyway. Oh, and by the way, I'm using the tripod, and I'm a little closer to the target here than I normally am on my uh, on my uh, rest, uh, my my table, my shooting bench. Um, unfortunately, the shooting bench is very close to the creek, and the creek has flooded several times over the winter. The whole area down there is flooded, so i um, doing the best I can with trying to keep it on target here and using this uh, tripod. So uh, let's get this done. That's uh, 1953 at 17 grains of powder. That's right what we're looking for. Um, with Dave's load traveling at 2,200 feet per second out at 50 yards, it's going to drop to that 19, about 1945, according to my uh, ballistic calculator. But uh, so 17 grains looks like where we need to be. Um, I'm still a little right and a little low on the target. We're going to adjust this a little bit and uh, pop off this next round but um, I'll see you for the ballistic gel test. Peace. God bless.
Hey YouTube, finally getting a chance to take a look at the uh, ballistic gel and uh, see what's going on in there. Uh, we took two shots. The one, the lower one, uh, was the first shot that was um, chronographed at 1716. And uh, the one on the upper side was uh, chronographed at 1936. I don't know what the difference is between the, between the two rounds, a couple hundred feet per second. I don't know why. Um, they were both loaded at the same time. Shouldn't have been a that should not have been an issue. Sorry about the shaky hands. Um, anyway, if the chronograph was accurate, both of them looked similar. Uh, the one, the first shot definitely had um, a larger uh, explosion in it. You can see on the left hand side uh, some black burning. Um, the top one looks much cleaner for whatever reason. Uh, there was a big explosion in that one too, and you you saw that in the uh, in the slow motion video. Um, there was actually three in that uh, in that top shot. But um, anyway, let's say that the chronograph was correct. That means that the bottom round had actually hit the target at sixteen hundred and twenty seven feet per second at twenty yards, uh, and it, it was pretty devastating. Um, it has about a one inch neck starts to expand right there. We did not capture either bullet, but if you review the video again, you'll actually see the um, uh, the projectile hit the steel plate at the end of the uh, at the end of the ballistic gel um, and bounced off of it back towards the camera. The second one uh, splattered when it hit the uh, the steel. You saw it knock a, a big chunk of paint off of it. So uh, I'm going to say that the chronograph is probably accurate, but I don't think it makes that much of a difference. Um, at 1,936 feet per second, uh, at 20 yards, we were traveling at 1,839 feet per second when it hit the ballistic gel. And it, that looks pretty devastating. Um, that's uh, 751 foot-pounds at 1,936. But forget all that because those were uh, uh, low and slow. Um, We've got other data for you. But anyway, let's look at this ballistic gel. Both of them had about a one-inch neck. Um, the top one actually maybe a little shorter than that, maybe a, about a half an inch. You'll, you can see that. Um, maybe about a, an inch or so of, of uh, permanent damage in there. Then it tapers out. The, the slower round actually looks like it has more permanent damage further down the way. Again, for whatever reason. But they both exited the ballistic gel 16 inches without an issue. So uh, I like the round. Um, I think it'd be great for varmint hunting. I'll give you a little more um, a little more data. Using the 16 inch barrel with a uh, 19 grains of 296 powder. Um, on average, I was traveling at 2420 feet per second, zeroed at 30 yards. There's a one and a half inch climb between 90 and 100 yards. And then uh, it zeroes back out again at 145 yards. And it's still traveling at 1,690 feet per second uh, at 145 yards with... Uh, 634 foot-pounds of pressure, which is faster than the slowest uh, slowest round. The first the first shot into the ballistic gel, which was uh, hit the hit the ballistic gel at 1627, and um, only has 588 foot-pounds at 20 yards. So. Uh, yeah, load these babies hot, and they, they should be a very good farm around. I mean, an inch and a half of deflection, if you're only shooting 150 yards, that's uh, you're going to get whatever, you, whatever you're aiming at. But um, we haven't done the uh, uh, target yet um, uh, uh, for accuracy, see how consistent they are. I've got another, I don't know, eight rounds loaded up. They're... Sitting here on the sitting here on the table, and uh, 
we'll probably get to that tomorrow and we'll get this thing all cut up and uh, get it out to everyone. I'm going to turn that light off just for a second so you can kind of see. You can see all the burning in that, in that bottom one. You see all that black in there. The second round did not do the same, but you can see there's a lot more permanent damage right there on that slower on that slower round. There's a little permanent damage there on the upper end and all the way down to the end again, 16. So uh, Gonzo 38, out. Hey guys, we're back down here at the range today and um, we're going to finish this uh, test on these. We're going to test them for accuracy. Uh, these are the 100 uh, grain short jacket, 30 caliber, uh, loaded up in 300 blackout. Um, they're traveling about 2,400 feet per second, maybe a little faster than that. I think my average was uh, 2,420. And um, I got to let you know though, this is not the most accurate rifle with small bullets, um, small projectiles. I zeroed it in with 110 grain to make sure that I'm at least on paper. We're going to shoot for a group, so they're not going to be centered, I'm sure. But uh, it's a very fast twist. It's a pretty small bullet. Uh, maybe a, a slower twist if you wanted to go with something like this. Uh, might actually give you better accuracy. I was getting about a two-inch group, I think, at uh, at uh, 100 meters. And um, so we're going to go ahead and, and throw these down range and see what we can see what we can accomplish. So. Uh, Eyes and ears. It is very windy today, too. They're high and a little bit right and left. So we'll take a look at it. Guys, the 38 out. Peace.